Kieran is preparing food for his baby and must use cooled boiled water. The equation y equals a e to the k t describes how the boiled water cools. In this equation, t is the time in minutes from when the water boiled. y is the difference between the water temperature and room temperature at time t, measured in degrees Celsius. a and k are constants. The temperature of the water when it boils is 100 degrees centigrade. So this is t equals zero. Okay, this is when the timer is set to zero. And as time goes on, this temperature decreases. The water cools down, basically. Now, the room temperature is held at a constant 23 degrees centigrade. In reality, as this water cools, the heat enters the surroundings, and the surrounding temperature increases. But because the surrounding room is so much bigger than, you know, this quantity of water, the temperature of the surrounding room does not increase. Well, it increases very slightly, but that tiny amount is negligible. So we can say that the surrounding room temperature is constant. So we want the value of the temperature difference y when the water boils. Okay, so y is the difference in temperature between the room and the water. Okay, so we just take them and subtract those numbers. Now we could subtract in the wrong way, you know, we could take the water temperature, the room temperature and subtract the water temperature and that's going to give us a negative value. But actually it's assumed here that y is some positive number. Okay, so we want to take the larger value, 100, and subtract the smaller value, 23. Now more accurately we are working out the temperature difference at t equals 0, okay? So y is some function of time. So we could write this as y of t equals a e to the kt. Just to emphasize that y is a function of time. a and k are just fixed numbers, they're just constants. All right, so just to repeat what I said earlier, we want our temperature difference y to be some positive number because this temperature difference will decrease Okay, so you know we have a bottle of water here at 100 degrees centigrade initially and uh, the surrounding room its temperature is 23 degrees centigrade so the heat is going from the bottle of water into the surroundings but the surroundings are so large that you know the increase in temperature of the, sur of the surroundings is negligible. It's so small that we might as well say the surroundings are at a constant temperature of 23 degrees. So we want the difference between them and uh, as time goes on, you know, that difference is going to get smaller and smaller. So that's why we want this difference to be a positive number. If it was a negative number, well, the difference would actually get bigger and bigger. You know, we'd start off at minus 77, and uh, the temperature difference would get bigger. And that's not really what we want to do. Okay, so, you know, y is going to be some decreasing function of time. Now... That's the value of y at time zero. But of course, we can use our formula for y. And we want to work it out when t is zero. So if we plug zero in, we get e to the power of k times zero, or just e to the zero. e to the zero is one, so we have a times one, which is a. So as we've seen previously, you know, this constant here in front of e is the value of our function at time zero. And that tells us that we know what A is. Okay, we're given that temperature difference is 77. So now we can write down our formula for Y of T. We still don't know what K is, but we're given some more information here. We're given that after 5 minutes, so T is equal to 5, the temperature of the water is 88 degrees centigrade. So do we set this thing equal to 88? Well, we have to be careful here. Why is the temperature difference? Okay, it's the difference between the uh, temperature of the water and the surroundings. The surroundings are constant 23 degrees centigrade, so it's equal to 88 minus 23. So you can see now that the temperature difference is less than what it was at the start, because the water has now cooled from 100 degrees down to 88 degrees. 
Alright, so now we just solve this equation for k. So we've covered this many times in previous videos. You know, we get the ln of both sides. So then we can apply our rule for logs. We can take the 5k in front here and 5k ln of e. Well, ln of e is just 1. So this thing here is just 5k. And we get a negative value for k. And that's expected because, you know, y is a decreasing function of, of t. So as we've seen in previous videos, this constant must be negative. Okay, so now we can write down our formula for the temperature difference y as a function of time. Kiran prepares the food for his baby when the water has cooled to 50 degrees centigrade. So what's the temperature difference when the water is 50 degrees centigrade? What, what is y? Well, y is just 100 minus 50. Oh, sorry, um, it's water temperature minus room temperature. Uh, room temperature is constant, of course. Um, so 50 minus 23. So y is 27, and we set it equal to this thing here. Because we want to find how long it takes for the water to cool to this temperature. So we want to find the time taken for the temperature difference to be 27, which means we want the time taken for the water to cool to 50 degrees. So we solve this problem in exactly the same way that we solved the previous problem. You know, we're looking for a power or an exponent. Well, in the previous problem, we were looking for k. Here, we're looking for t. So, you know, uh, we divide 27 by 77, take ln of both sides, and divide across by this number here. I won't go through all that. We d we've done it many times. t is in minutes, to the nearest minute we get 31 minutes for the water to cool to 50 degrees. Now we are going to draw a sketch of our function. Now it's called f of t here, but anyway, you know, um, it's actually y of t, but you know, you can use the letter f to indicate that it's just a function. Um, and you're getting f of a load of these time values. Now, if you just want a rough sketch, you know, we could just work out the value of the function at zero. And that's quite easy, because e to the power of zero is one, so we get 77. So let's look at the graph. So the graph starts at 77. You see, when t is zero. Okay, so when t is zero, uh, y of zero is 77. Now, our f of 0, I could say, it's renamed f of t here for some reason. So that's this graph up here. g of t refers to the next part of the question. Now, we saw previously how to draw a rough sketch of this kind of function. And I'll just go through it again here. We have a negative power here, so that means we can write our function like this. So it's 77 times 1 over e to the power of plus... 0 0.0339t. So now we're interested in what the graph looks like for very large values of t. So in theory, we let t approach infinity. And, you know, if t approaches infinity, well, this denominator will approach infinity. Okay, as t gets bigger and bigger, well, e to the power of 0 0.0339t will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we'll have 77 divided by an infinitely large number, you know, and that's 0. So the function starts at 77, and it keeps decreasing towards 0. But all points in the curve are above the x-axis, you know. The y value of this point here is always some positive number. It's always bigger than 0, because we never actually reach 0. So the limit of the function is 0, but the function itself, y of t, is never equal to 0. It never reaches 0, but we can get arbitrarily close to 0. So that means that the curve keeps on decreasing and approaching the t-axis, but never reaches the t-axis. So we could put an arrow at the end of the curve to indicate that. So that would be our rough sketch. Now we will look at a second model for the rate of cooling of the water. This new model, g of t, where g is the temperature difference between 
the water and the surroundings, is given by AE to the power of MT, where A has the same value as before. So A is just the value of the temperature difference G at time zero. You know, that's going to be A e to the zero, which is just A. So as I've pointed out several times, this value here is the initial value of the exponential function. Now this function will have a different value for the coefficient of t than our previous model, which was minus 0 0.0339. For our new model, we want it to cover the situation where the water cools at a faster rate. So remember, the water is initially 100 degrees and the surroundings are a constant 23 degrees. As time goes on, the surroundings, the room, remains at 23 degrees, but eventually the water temperature will reach the same temperature as the room temperature. So the water temperature will become 23 degrees. So that means that the difference in the temperature will be zero. So g at time infinity, we could write it like this, although infinity is not a number, but in, in, in theory, as t approaches infinity, g approaches zero. It's just that we want g to approach zero faster than uh, for the previous model. So what does that tell us about this value of m? How does m compare to this value here? Okay, let's look at the graph of g of t. It's going to have the same shape, or same. it's the same type of function as f of t. It's an exponential function. It starts at the same value, 77 degrees. But as time goes on, we want the value of g to be less than the value of y. Okay, I've just changed this to y of t. Um, so for example, when t is 30 minutes, we want g of 30 to be less than y of 30. And the same for 40 and 50 and 60 and so on, or any time. Okay, we want g of t to be less than y of t. So the graph of g of t is going to be below the graph of y of t. Now it turns out for that to happen, the value of m has to be less than the value for y of t. So m has to be less than minus 0 0.0339. Let's see why that is true. Let's pick a value of m to see why that's true. So let m be, say, minus 0 0.1. That's less than minus 0 0.0339. Okay, so I've plugged in that value for m, and let's write it like this here. Now, notice that this denominator here is bigger than the denominator up here. e to the point 1t is bigger than e to the 0 0.0339t. I'll just continue writing up here. So what happens as t approaches infinity? Well, you know, you can see that um, if we look at our function, this thing here is going to approach infinity, of course, but it's going to approach infinity faster than the situation for our previous model, okay, because this denominator is bigger. So as t gets bigger and bigger, this blows up to infinity faster. So that means that the entire fraction is going to approach zero faster than our pr previous model. So if we take any graph that's below y, we have a situation where the function approaches zero more quickly. So, you know, we could have a graph like this. This graph approaches zero even more quickly than, than g of t does. So the smaller m is, the faster we approach zero. But m is a negative number, so we're talking about very um, numbers getting smaller and smaller in the neg in 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 um, in the sense that they're becoming more and more negative. So we could say, you know, as m becomes a larger and larger negative value, the function approaches zero more quickly. Okay, so we're just de we're always dealing with negative values here when we have decreasing exponential functions. Next, we want the rate of change of the function f of t after 1 minute and 10 minutes. Well, f of t is just the same as y of t. 
Well, the rate of change is just, just a derivative of y with respect to t, written y prime of t or dy dt. So um, when we differentiate e to the power of something, we just get it back over here. But then we must multiply by the derivative of the power. So the derivative of this power is minus 0 0.0339, which is multiplied by 77 to give minus 2.6103. So to get the values at 1 and 10, we just plug in 1 into this expression to get minus 2.52. And if we plug 10 into this expression, we get minus 1.86. So these are the slopes of the curves at t equals 1 and t equals 10. You know, so if I won't show t equals 1, but say, let's say at t equals 10. Uh, if we go up to the curve, well, you know, the slope of this curve at this point is is given by minus 1.86 it's negative okay so the slope is always negative actually if we pick any point in this curve we can see the slope of the curve is negative as we've seen before the slope of a curve at a point is the same as the slope of the tangent to the curve at that point because if we zoom in on a point the tangent and the curve become indistinguishable. Okay, so the slope of this tangent is the same as the slope of the curve at this point here. Show that the rate of change of f of t will always increase over time. Well, the rate of change is just the derivative. So let's look at the derivative of f of t, or, or y of t. Well, that's just uh, uh, the derivative, of course. And we want to show that this is an increasing function. Now there are two ways that we can do that. We can look at the second derivative, or we can look at the graph. So I'll do, do it both ways. I'll start by looking at the graph of this function. Now it's easy enough actually to draw a rough sketch of this graph. Let's first of all consider just the graph of um, this bit here. Okay, that's what I'm showing here. Forget about this minus 2.6103, that negative constant. If we look at this graph here, right, if we set t equal to 0, we get e to the power of 0, which is 1. So it begins at 1. And because of the minus sign, it's decreasing. So we've seen this many times before. If the power is negative and, you know, as t is increasing, the function is decreasing. It's approaching 0, but never reaches 0. So it's a decreasing function. Well, this part is a decreasing function. What happens if we multiply by a negative number? Well, let's, let's not worry about this exact function for now. Let's imagine that we multiply this part by minus 1. Okay, so instead of this here, we get minus e to the minus 0 0.0339t. Now, if we multiply any, a function by minus 1, all we do is we just flip it over. We just reflect it through the x-axis. So this function gets reflected through the x-axis. So in particular, plus 1 becomes minus 1. So now you see that by multiplying a decreasing function by minus 1, we get an increasing function. So as time goes on, this function increases. Okay, and as, as time approaches infinity, this function approaches 0, but from below. So it's an increasing function. Now multiplying by 2.6103 makes very little difference. That's only going to scale the graph. Okay, so to turn this function here into what we're after, we just, you know, multiply this thing by 2.6103. So 2.6103 by minus 1 gives us minus 2.6103. So it'll look very similar to this, same kind of shape. Well, it won't be identical, of course, but it'll have a similar kind of shape, but it's going to be an increasing function. Okay, so that's a rough sketch of our function. Now, um, we can go and get the second derivative and look at it that way, but... Um, I should also say that this is increasing for all times. So t begins at 0. We don't deal with negative times here. t begins at 0. And as time goes on, you can see that this is always increasing. It's getting closer and closer to the t-axis, but never reaching it. Now, here is the second derivative of this function. So the exponential term remains the same, as you can see. But we have to multiply by the derivative of the power. The derivative of the power is minus 0 0.0339. So we have minus 0 0.0339 times minus 2.6103. That gives plus 0 0.088. 
and uh, notice that this quantity here is always positive okay if you plug in any value for t remember t begins at zero so t is going to be some positive number um, but actually even if it was negative this would still be positive but anyway here you know t is some positive number but e to the power of any number is positive anyway if you take as we see we've explained before um, e to this negative value is just e to the plus point zero three three nine t so you know this thing this thing here is always positive and we're multiplying by something positive that's the key to it we got a positive value when we took the derivative so all of this expression is positive for all values of t so remember what y double prime of t is it's the slope of y prime of t so here's the graph of y prime of t and you can see the slope of this graph is always positive if we pick any point here and look at the slope well that's the same as the slope of the tangent you can see it has positive slope and no matter what point we pick we get a positive slope we never get a slope of zero because the graph never becomes horizontal it's always approaching the t axis axis so like you know this slope will always be some number bigger than t it'll, it'll, tangents are approaching a horizontal line but never reach a horizontal state so that's true for in general for any function that's increasing its slope is positive you know if the function was decreasing like this here the slope would be a negative value 